Welcome to Apostolic Sermons TV. On this channel, you're going to be getting soul lifting messages, prayers that will help you grow and mature spiritually. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel, like the video you're about to watch, and comment also. Thank you and stay blessed. Something. It is not lack that sustains you. It is not plenty that sustains you. It is Jesus that sustains you. Jesus will teach you the lesson of how to abase, how to abound. So there were days where there was no supply of the 1,000 naira. You need to know Jesus under the shade and know him in the sun. This kind of training is designed to equip you so that lack will not have the power to dethrone your conviction. This kind of training is needed so that want, so that prosperity will not have the power to dethrone your conviction. And all of these numerous assortments of dealings are built around your life so that you can go past the fear of hunger, go past the fear of, of plenty, and your objective will be to follow Jesus in spite of the circumstances. As you navigate on the path, he will arrange meticulously that you are beaten by the rain sometimes. And the moment the rain comes to bless you, Satan will now take your ear and begin to whisper. He will give you the opportunity to make a choice whether you want to follow, walk with Satan for a while. He is a gentleman. He will not force you to follow him. But if you are looking for encouragement from him in his hands, he knows how to drop one or two things on your spirit that will revive. Because the journey is not a journey of, not a mental journey, it's a journey of faith. He will starve you of all the kind of support that human beings need to see a future that is bright. You can only see through him, through his instruction, through his guidance, through his leading. And you know what I told you yesterday? God is in a hurry to bring revival, but he's not in a hurry with you. You will go through the primary school. You will go through the secondary school. <laughs> you will go through the university. Meanwhile, he wants to bring fire. He wants to release revival. He wants to, huh? but with you, he's not in a hurry. Are you still willing to follow him? You still remember that when he called Abraham out of his settlement, he did not give him the address of where he was going. So there was no cognitive stamina for the adventure. Are you, are you, are you listening to his story? No cognitive stamina, no cognitive reference point. You are, not, you are not functioning from your head. It doesn't make sense. So you function from your heart. And you are going to be like that for a long time until you receive the knowledge of the fact that if God is with you. Nothing really can successfully stand again. It is about the Lord. Are you there? It's not about your formulas, not about the things you learned in the university. Those things will not work. It is about the Lord. So that every door he opens, you will know that this is him working. You see, now he has opened one door. You're not with me? You know, he said, I will bless you. I will sustain you. And I was reading that scripture after the lecture yesterday, and it became clear. Two things I did not see while I was teaching was God's commitment to a man that carries a calling. He says what? I will make thee a great nation. That's not one. I will what? Bless thee. That's number two. I will make thy name great. That's number three. And thou shalt be, I will make you a blessing. So there are four I wills there. The I will is, is a revelation of God's commitment to a man that has decided not to cast away his confidence. I will. I will. I don't know when last you attended the wedding. And the high point of the wedding is the vow. Will you take this woman? She's, she's 5.2 feet tall. That means when you are looking for her eh? on the ceiling where the fan is, on the wardrobe, you will not see her. If you want to see her, look down. So it is this particular woman they are talking about. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> will you take her? When you look up, you won't see her there. She's here. This one. Will you love her? We attended a wedding some time ago. We knew that the, the, the intended couple fought before the previous day, before that day. So when this moment came, all of us, our legs were shaking, we were praying in tongues. <laughs> we were in tongues that they should, they should say I do. <laughs> oh, oh my God. So God's legs were not shaking when he said, I will bless you. If you are stupid enough for... To allow yourself to be led by him. Then you begin to see his commitment. And when you begin to see his commitment is from one point to another point to another point, it will be easy for you to, to read the seasons of your life. The seasons of your life are consistent with changes in that commitment. There was a time 
it was difficult for you to have 1,000. But a season came, that episode passed. For many of us, we are not smart students of the Spirit, so you don't know what God taught you at the first stage. So even though you pass into the second stage, you did not learn the lesson of the first stage. The lesson of the first stage was that whether he had the 50 naira or the 1,000 naira, he was sustained. Even he himself cannot tell us how that sustenance came. Somehow, he will eat. And if there's no provision for him to eat, it means God is saying, it's been long since you fasted. I know you people look for food in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. But when it was God that was responsible for Elijah's meal, he brought him food in the morning and evening only. I know you don't like this type. When God was responsible. So there are times when God will determine your ration. That's part of the training of that season. So that even if you cross into the next season where you don't need rations, you can eat the way you, you still remember that when it was the Lord that was con controlling my rations, this way. so irrespective of whether you are bound or you are based, you remember the lesson of rations. Are you there? So as we, we move with the testimony, please make sure you are, because many of you have abandoned what God has called you to do. And like we said yesterday, there's not everyone that has a call to pioneer a mission for God, but every believer has a calling, has, has a location that you were ordained to express your calling, to express your line of service delivery. Yes, so, so when there's a question I want, I want to ask you, but you have not reached there yet. This is your story. So it's, the way you are going now, it seems this, our interview, is the lecture for the night. Uh, I will bring some points at the end of the lecture. Yes? So he told me that um, I can come with him. So he gave me the address for it, and I said I was coming the next day. I moved to the house, and my friend who was so disappointed, he didn't know what to tell me. I told him, don't worry, somebody has opened up for me. I moved my things hurriedly, kept calling. I said, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. So when I go to his house, lo and behold, he had four bedroom apartment. His, his family where his wife was a medical doctor in her house, doing her housemanship in Owere. And two of us had four bedrooms to ourselves. He said, choose whichever room you want. Now that's another season. Yeah. When you pass into the next season, please don't forget the lessons of the previous one. If not, you will lose all discipline. You will cast off all restraint. You will now prepare yourself to live the life. That means you have decided to take three steps backward. You are more lost than, than, than before you came into that plant. The test of prosperity is more difficult to pass than the test of poverty. Everybody can pass the test of poverty. Not everybody can pass the test of prosperity. What you need to survive the test of poverty, you learn of prosperity, you learn during the days of poverty. And it is supposed to be truths and lessons that you, that, that you equip yourself with and make a, as much a part of you as your own beating heart. So that you saw the God of lack. And you were following the purpose of God in spite of his presence. Then you saw the God of plenty and you were following the purpose of God in spite of his presence. You, you did not allow lack nor abundance to become an obstacle. That means you are a servant of God. You know that your making is tied to following Jesus. Let me say, sound a warning here quietly. Don't become so smart that you think for God. Go back and check what God has called you to. Many people added to it. God says, go to the market, buy pineapple, come back and wait for me. He went to the market, bought pineapple, then saw one purple that was very big. It was extraordinary. So he added it. And when he came back, he peeled the pineapple and the purple. Meanwhile, they told him, when you get back, wait for me. When you are working with God, leave your creativity behind and do exactly what he has asked you to do. The thing most times looks foolish. It takes a man that is willing to be foolish to walk by faith. The thing most times does not look so smart. It takes a man that is not willing, that is willing to undermine his reputation to walk with God. There are two things I need to say before he continues. And these two things are consistent with the book of Romans chapter 6. I was looking for a skillful way to make it available. In Romans chapter 6, the challenge of a believer who is now a new creation was clearly spelled out. The first challenge is that there is a possibility that he can still subscribe to falling energy. There's a possibility that he will still want to drive his life on the strength of falling energy. That falling energy is what the Bible calls flesh. Anytime you hear flesh, put falling in your mind. And the thing about flesh is this. Flesh is the resistant equipment that Satan puts in place to fight against the move of God in your life. What flesh does is that it is in 
conflict, perpetual conflict with the Holy Spirit. The devil is saying through flesh that I could not stop you from giving your life to Christ, but I will stop you from subscribing to the Holy Ghost through the fallen energy, through flesh. Whenever you are in a circumstance, you are in a situation, there are only two ways you can respond. You can respond either in the spirit or it is still possible for you to have received a genuine call and the energy with which you want to use to drive the call, flesh submits its energy to you to use to drive. That's number one. Number two, there's another enemy of the new creation and that is self. Whereas flesh is resistant to the spirit of God, self is resistant to the government of Christ. Self is an alternative God. You must realize that the heart of man is a factory that manufactures idols. At any point in time that the lordship of Jesus is contested, it's because you decided to make obeisance to that God called self. If you read the story of the fall of Lucifer, you will see how he fell. It was a prophetic story that Isaiah told. How had that fallen? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cast down to the ground, thou that didst weaken the nation? And you will see self. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Next verse. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. It's an alternative God. So, are you there? All right. So this is the this is the theology of Romans chapter six. Flesh plus self equals old man. When God calls you, his spirit begins to hover over your life. When his spirit begins to hover over your life, unknown to you, what he's trying to achieve is that he's trying to pedestal himself in a position where he will have the authority to direct your life. You know, it is possible for you to be born again, but you, you refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to direct your life. And if that is the case, it means that you have subscribed to flesh. So the Bible says there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not so you can be in Christ Jesus and walk after that. Even if in, in the most noble things like a calling, the reason why God regulates the life of a man he has called so stringently, he can expose you to hunger sometimes, expose you to the elements sometimes, allow you to be without housing. He's teaching you how to recognize the authority of the Holy Spirit over and above the flesh. Until you get that lesson that in all things, obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there are diverse experiences that he will put you through in bringing you to that point where it is only the Holy Spirit that holds sway in your life. Now listen, before he goes on, I'm giving you this highlight so that you can see what I'm teaching in his story. He will bring you into captivity so that what is driving you, the opportunities you have for expression, it brings the flesh into captivity. So it's hard. And then you now begin to, the, to hear the voice of one captain called the Holy Spirit. So this is the thing. The Holy Spirit wants to be the Lord within you. So if the Holy Ghost is the Lord within you, Jesus will be the Lord over you. You know the fight? You are, not, are you here? You know the fight? The flesh wants to be an alternative for spirit authority. Self wants to be an alternative for Jesus' government. The key to working with God is obeying the Lord within you. Now give me 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Huh? Okay, 2 Corinthians, sorry. 2 Corinthians 3, 7. I make a statement, then we allow him to continue. Sometimes, in order for him to weaken the power of the flesh in a certain area, he will put you in a very uncomfortable situation for four years. Then he, he brings that area, that strength, into full paralysis. He no longer has the authority to hold sway in your life so you can continue with the Holy Ghost. At any point in time where your nerve your nerve of flesh begins to revive. Your alignment, your obedience, your recognition of the authority of the Holy Spirit will come into doubt. And as you are doing this journey, Satan will be there to whisper into your ears with his mind-bending technique. So at every point in time, you will need to make a choice. I choose to serve Jesus. It doesn't look popular. It doesn't look attractive. But I choose to serve. Okay, Satan can even say, okay, okay, okay. I will not stop you from serving him. But can you serve him like this? So Satan now gives you, through the flesh, giving you options, strategies on how to serve. That's why the process is very, very. Now the Lord is that spirit, the Bible says. So the spirit of God is also a Lord. But he is the Lord within you. And when you subscribe to the Lord within you, you are also in subscription to the Lord over you. Exactly. Don't forget this. So you're asking why you have not yet been elevated beyond the test of poverty. Why is your own too long? It's because 
the nerve of strength. There is a nerve of strength that links you to the falling life that Jesus is dealing with. And as long as you refuse to allow the Spirit of God win, you remain in that school. Because if it exposes you further, you will now sustain a mold that is akin to the flesh, and then all of your service will not be accepted to God. Unfortunately, as we go around from place to place, we see the energy with which people are doing ministry. Even among the pious, the sacramental and sanctimonious preachers, when you look carefully, to trace the energy, you still see Adam in the foundation of the effort. You go to bigger cities and you, you take a very good look. You will notice that in this place, for many of our brothers and sisters in ministry, it is the energy of the flesh. It's the flesh that has recommended to them how God should be served. So when you see the kind of service, it is rigged with all the textures of the fallen man. You see a man, he has risen so high, but he didn't raise anybody. That's not ministry. That's self. It's an idol. It's a God. Because the more your life will be a blessing, the more you will be surrendered to death. Death to self. If you gain mileage, are you here? Now, if you gain more mileage in the issue of death to self, and let me give you a few ways by which you know your current standing in all that matter. If we check your life of giving, and you know it's not a giver. It's not the man that has money that gives. It's only a giver that gives. Check your giving life. You will know if the voice of God can influence that aspect of your life. Check your fasting life. Flesh doesn't like fasting. You saw the reaction when he wanted to do three days. The whole body, in fact, a time will come, the, the, the leg will be shaking like it. It is, flesh doesn't want you to de-emphasize it. It will, it will rebel. It will rebel. Always ask yourself, this thing I'm doing, what is the objective? How many people have you given opportunity? Have you opened? Is it possible for you to leave the pulpit and allow other people? And you, you are just there. And you don't care. Those, will, those parameters will give you an idea of how much, what, what is the worth, what the worth of your work with God. So it's very brutal. The reason why it's very brutal is because the Holy Spirit is the only ancient being that has the authority to strangle the flesh. And his methods are not contemporary. You would have preferred that the Holy Spirit should appear to him and show him, okay, in five years, you do this. In 10 years, you'll be here. Then in 15 years, you'll be in Toronto, Canada. The flesh will hijack that process. 